Is the T. Celadonia illegal in the U.S.? Let's find out. Now, for those of you that have been living under a rock for the past couple of years, the Typhocalana celadonia, or the Brazilian jewel tarantula, is a New World arboreal trapdoor tarantula with amazing coloration. It's highly sought after worldwide, and it's very expensive due to the supply and demand. There are very few of these tarantulas out there in the hobby at breeding age, and when someone does have a successful breeding, typically an egg sac only produces 20 to 30 eggs, it seems. Now, everything I talk about in this video will be concerning the US laws regarding this species. Though many countries across the world have similar laws, so though this may not exactly apply to you, in general, you may be in a similar situation. Now, before we address this current situation, we need to go back in time and start at the beginning to fully understand the scope of this issue. Now, the main factor related to the legality of this species in America is the Lacey Act of 1900. Now, this act is a conservation law in the United States that prohibits trade in plants and animals that have been illegally taken, possessed, transported, or sold. You see, around 1900, illegal commercial hunting threatened a lot of species in the US. The original act was really aimed at the preservation of game and wild birds, making it illegal to poach animals in one state and transfer it to a different state to sell for a profit. The law prohibited the transportation of illegally captured or prohibited animals across state lines. And it also addressed potential problems of non-native species being introduced into the ecosystem here. They were trying to avoid a lot of the problems that were being seen in Australia. Now today, the Lacey Act is mainly used to prevent the importation of non-native species of plants or animals that could be dangerous. The act also makes it unlawful to import, export, transport, sell, receive, acquire, or purchase in interstate or foreign commerce any plant or animal in violation of the laws of the United States, a single individual state, a Native American tribe, or any foreign law that protects plants or animals. And it's that last part that applies directly to this situation. Now, the T. Celadonia was originally described by Carl Lugwood Koch in Brazil in 1841. Fast forward to 2016, and the United States Fish and Wildlife Service began to notice that this species was cropping up in the hobby. They really began to take notice when they started seeing people post pictures of this species that they had in their private collection in US tarantula groups on Facebook. In 2017, they start confiscating Brazilian endemic species as they're being imported into the US, but only in some cases. Then in July of 2018, the Fish and Wildlife Service confiscated a shipment of T. Celadonia, even though it had all the proper import documentation and previous imports of that species had recently been allowed. It's important to note that sites had not listed this as an endangered species, so any of those laws or regulations did not apply. What appears to have happened was the Fish and Wildlife Service had communicated with the government of Brazil and they were told by the Brazilian government that that species had never been legally exported. You see, in 1998, Brazil enacted a law that made it illegal to export any type of flower or fauna from their country. Unless, of course, you had specific written consent from the government, which as of recording this video, since 1998, they've never given permission for any tarantula to be exported from their country. So upon learning this, Fish and Wildlife Service declares T. Celadonia in this country, whether it came from South America or was shipped from breeders in Europe, they say that all T. Celadonia outside of Brazil are illegal since there are no records of that species being legally exported. Even captive bred spiderlings are considered fruit from the forbidden tree, no matter how many generations they've been bred in captivity. They can all be traced back to the original illegally smuggled specimens. Then agents from the Fish and Wildlife Service begin reaching out to breeders and keepers that they found found online to explain the legal issues here. So what exactly does all this mean? It means that selling or transferring T. Celadonia in the US is illegal, even within state lines. No matter how many generations of captive bred specimens there are, they can all be traced back to the original illegally smuggled specimens and thus all fall under the protection of the Lacey Act, which is an issue because essentially the US government is enforcing the laws of other countries on citizens and businesses in the United States, 
Even though those individuals and businesses followed all the known guidelines and the species were initially cleared for import, as of now, a Fish and Wildlife Service officer claims that no one has gone to someone's home or business and confiscated spiders upon import to the US. Essentially, the government isn't seizing or formally acting on this species, except in situations regarding the import into the country. Now, agents at the FWS won't speculate on what might happen in the future, but would like to think that educational and scientific institutions would be of a lower priority for enforcement than commercial breeders or smugglers. Now there's no need to reinvent the wheel here as there's already an organization that has a proven track record of dealing with the government in situations like this. US ARC was founded in 2008 to protect reptile keepers and breeders from an increasingly restrictive regulatory environment. They're credited with pioneering advocacy of herpetoculture, which is the keeping and propagation under human care of reptiles and amphibians. Now based on my conversation with the president of US ARC, they are more than willing and happy to help out the tarantula hobby in these situations. Situations. And as a hobby, we should really get involved with this group to benefit from their knowledge, experience, and connections. We're a nonprofit, so we're a 501c6, which most nonprofits and people are familiar with are 501c3. So all we are is a different type of designation under the IRS. But yeah, we are a registered 501c6 nonprofit. Now it's worth noting that I'm not a journalist. This is not the culmination of months of investigation. All of this information is readily available and easily accessible online. I simply just put it all together and I'm telling you about it. This is actually a video I was wanting to make back in like December, but up until recently, there was really no public statements on record that I could refer to. All I'd be able to do is tell you about rumors I've heard and show you text messages that I had with people that could have easily been photoshopped. But since then, articles have come out in journals, people have gone on the record with statements, and others affected by this situation are publicly documenting the details on various websites. It's no longer just rumor and speculation. So I feel confident in laying this information to you. So what does this all mean? It is still illegal to buy, sell, or transport this species in the United States, even in between private individuals within the same state. There is a legal case currently pending, and hopefully when it is resolved, there will be much more clarification on this issue. Now, according to Dustin at Simply Spiders, who is intimately involved in this situation, as he does possess and is breeding T. celadonia, the Fish and Wildlife Service will eventually issue a statement clarifying the legal status of these specimens. So with the Celadonia, this is how things are right now. Uh, Fish and Wildlife Services is going to make a policy. They've been working on it for a while. That's basically going to grandfather anything that's already been here in the country. They're just not going to allow imports anymore of them. They're not going to seize them. They're not taking anything away. They're just not going to allow any more Brazilian endemic species to be imported and without CITES permission. The ones that are here in the country are safe, but the ones, they just can't be imported in anymore. Uh, Fish and Wildlife Services knows that I have produced a sack, but because of concern and legalities of it, uh, I didn't sell any. I basically just gave them away to proper breeders who will make sure that they're raised right and then they will breed them later on. I did hear out of Fish and Wildlife Services mouth that they are working on a policy and they are just gonna grandfather them in. There was too many people that had already had them and there has been two legal imports of them before. Basically what the guy who's writing the policy said was, there's too many people that have them distributed that Fish and Wildlife Services wouldn't be able to keep track of it anyways, so that's why they're just going to grandfather them in, but just not allow imports in without CITES permission anymore. We can even potentially still be able to get the cousins of the T. Celadonian stuff here legally. It's just going to take permission through Fish and Wildlife Services for them to be able to be imported in. They're just going to have to get CITES on it. But until then, in my opinion, it's probably best not to try and purchase these species at least until you're legally allowed. And if you already own one, maybe be careful posting pictures of it on social media, as we know the US government is watching. Now, I don't have anything against T. Celadonia. I personally find them to be beautiful, and I, I mean, I really wish I could have one in my collection. But here in the States, it seems that anyone that actually has one is what's considered a reputable breeder. And since I'm not a tarantula breeder, I have no intention of breeding or selling teas in the future. It's no wonder I haven't got one. What's really a shame is that the Brazilian government is allowing for the deforestation and destruction of the habitat of a lot
lot of these endemic Brazilian species and not allowing them to be exported where they can be preserved in the hobby or even in the scientific field. Personally, I believe if the US government allowed some of them to be imported, they definitely should be grandfathered in, even if they're not gonna allow future imports of that species. And those specimens that are in the hobby should be bred and passed along to keep this species alive and thriving, even if only in the hobby. Now, this has all just been US law that applies to US citizens. You'll need to check your country's own laws regarding the importation of species illegally exported and their enforcement measures regarding these laws. Many larger countries probably have very similar laws, but whether or not they're enforced is a completely different matter. So if you're one of the people in the US that has this species, consider yourself very lucky and please act responsibly. As a hobby, we should be self-regulating so the government doesn't feel the need to impose regulations upon us. I highly suggest everyone check out US ARC's website. I'll have them linked in the top of my description as well as the first comment under this video. Become a member if you're not, support them in any way you can. At the very least, send them a message and let them know that the Tarantula Hobby wants to be involved. If you enjoyed this video, be sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you wanna see more content. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and as always, protect your neck.